Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. Nightlight, everybody. So glad you could join us tonight. We want to thank Ken Quiethawk for his amazing intro. You can find him and his wife at nativestorytellers.com. Just uh, check out his website. Check out his amazing tradition of preserving history. He has a lot of CDs out there. You might want to try some of them because it's a great way to learn history without having to go to a textbook. So, uh, also, if you are listening to the show on, in archive, please, um, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. It's the only way we know you're listening, and it gives us encouragement to keep going with a lot of the different kinds of shows that we're putting out there these days. During these times of confusion and unsettlement, humanity looks to the planets and the stars for understanding, compassion, and direction. Michelle Avanti returns to Nightlight to help all of us find clarity and insight as to what the future holds for all of us. This is not a reading show. It is one that helps us all to focus in a more spiritual direction as we clear the pathway towards a brighter and more peaceful future. So welcome, welcome, welcome back to the show, Michelle. I missed you. (laughs) I missed you too. Life is so interesting. It seems like the entire world has turned upside down since the last time I spoke with you. And inside out, yes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, these are times, you know, it's certainly they're, they're times of mass confusion and, all, and unsettlement and everything, but to me it, it says, okay, there's, there's a new foundation that's going to be built, and it's going to be a better one, hopefully. Yeah. And And so... You know, I, I it it's a good thing to have you on to help to help hopefully explain to people what's going on and the shifts and the changes that that we have as potential for a brighter future. Yeah, well, that's that's the key. The key is to um, be careful where you focus. You know, uh, where we are in time, there is no one who is listening to this now or down the road who didn't uh, volunteer to be here at this time because this is an amazing, amazing gateway we are standing on. We are standing right there in the doorway. We haven't quite unlatched the door yet, but we are standing right there. We can see the light pouring under the door, and when we look at the door, it just kind of looks black. But look at the light because soon we'll turn that knob. And then we enter an entirely new time and space. It's the space that we've all been dreaming of. When you came into a physical body and you said, I want to go home, instead of saying, I want to be here, (laughs) (laughs) you, you were actually saying, I want to be in a place where there is love, where love is the currency. I want to be in a place where I know There is integrity, there is respect, 
there's transparency. And it is not just for humanity, but it is for all life. This planet and everything that Mother Gaia has created, because we're all part of it. You know, when you die, your body goes back to the earth. Um, We all have bodies that have come from the earth. And yes, we are soul inside these vehicles we call human bodies or organisms. And uh, and we are lucky, really lucky to be here in this absolutely amazing time. We've talked about the 26,000-year cycle and us being in it. Well, we're here. We are in that portion of the cycle that is uh, zooming through a 20-year window into a whole new uh, golden age, a time where we will experience that connection to life that we have missed so deeply. You know, metakiasin, uh, the Lakota words for all my relations, who we are is a part and interconnected with every living thing, every insect, every piece of sand, every mountain, every tree. They're all living things, even though it may appear that they don't move and they might not appear to have any kind of real life. They're all living things. Everything is living. It has an energy field of its own, and some of them are incredibly tiny energy fields. And we have such a huge one with a level of consciousness and creative abilities and, uh, and an amazing body that can do so many things that other bodies can't do. But that also gives us all that responsibility to care for and love and and nurture all the other bodies that can't do what we can do. So we're coming into our own. And in order to do that, we have to dig every single secret up out of the ground Reveal it, forgive it, bless it. Be grateful that it is the card that has given us a new forgiveness and freedom to move forward. And, of course, that's where we are now, digging it up out of the ground (laughs) and looking at things that, dear God, we don't, going, oh, dear God, I don't, I can't believe I'm looking at this. You know, to see a man. Yeah, I was going to say, I've, I've described it as though we are going through a birthing process to a new level of consciousness. And anyone who has had a child or been around someone who is having a child knows that it is a painful process, but the result is is just glorious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone who's had a child, as they say, there's a saying in metaphysics, actually, uh, that is along those lines. And that saying is that if you walk the road of mastery, it is an incredibly painful road. And anyone will tell you, I want off. But then they look back and they say, no, I would never choose any other road because what I have already learned is beyond anything I thought I could. So, yeah. yeah. it's And, and that's where we are. We, we are in a space where we uh, called in something that would be a catalyst to reveal to us everything so that we could choose again with clarity of consciousness what it is we do want. And uh, so we stand in this zone where, oh, my Lord, Um, and this pandemic, what a gift, what an incredible gift this is and and I know those of you who are listening are going she's lost her mind we've had over a hundred thousand people in this country die you know I grieve with every person who's lost anyone because to lose anyone is painful I went through a year Mm -hmm. last year where I lost eight eight beings that I loved in one year oh wow Uh, it it started with an uncle and then a mother and then a cousin and it just kept going and and then close to me was my our our the one dog that Joe and I actually had raised from a puppy we we always get rescues this one we rescued from a place <laughs> but it, we rescued from a puppy and and he died and and then we had our Stevie Wonder die and it just it went on and on and on and um 
so I, I I grieve with everyone, but I also want you to look at it from soul's viewpoint. These beings who have left those bodies, they're coming back. <laughs> they're going to come back with a new freedom that they never had in the body that they just left. So uh-huh. most of us who are leaving now are going to basically do a 180 and come back very quickly. The old standard was it would take about 100 years for someone to come back. That is no uh-huh. longer relevant. People are coming and going now like I have always. I've always come and gone quickly. I I have like a three-year sprint usually uh, between (laughs) lifetimes. I I come here, they give me information, and I give it away, and then I leave, and then they fill me up with more information. I come back, and I give that out, and then I go and leave. And so I've done that for a very, very, very long time. and it's just who I am, and I know who I am. I've known that ever since I was a little little kid. But, um, you know, and that can be a blessing and a curse. Everything is a blessing and a curse. <laughs> so, well, you know, yeah, looking at... I mean, there, there are two sides to everything. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's how you choose to perceive it as to how it affects your reality. And, yeah. um, you know, is it hard? Is it difficult? Is it strenuous? Sure. But... But then you get to see the results, and then it's like, holy mackerel, look at that. So that, yeah. so that it is this, this amazing, you know, are, are, you, are you going through the ringer, so to speak? Absolutely. But, you know, when you come out the other end, it's going to be magnificent. It, it's, it's like birthing a child. It's painful as heck. Um, would I choose to do it again? Not necessarily. I, it's, I'm one and done. But, but there are lots of people that do it. Many times, and I mean, they become a creator. They 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 enable someone to enter the earth plane, and yeah. that's an amazing um, journey. It's an amazing thing to do, and you know, when you when you look at it from that standpoint, it 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 makes it worth the pain in many cases. Um, I, I'm not a fan of pain, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. I mean, it's not, it's not my idea of a good time. You know, we we just no. lost our we just lost our little kitty Minnie um, just just a few days ago, and uh, and, uh, and and she she really decided she was leaving uh, because she had a, a sickness that we would have to give her medicine twice a day, and she didn't like it. And uh, and she didn't have the freedom that she was used to, and uh, she ran away. <laughs> and then we caught her, and then Joe gave her medicine again, and then she managed to get another escape, and she wasn't going to come back no matter what. And uh, I called all the neighbors, and, and they said if we saw her, they, they would call us. And then uh, Thursday, um, uh, one of my neighbors called, and, and he thought she was dead. And I went down there, and she was still alive. And uh, and she was in a lot of pain, and I brought her home, and uh, and I I nursed her as best as I could, and I I made her comfortable, and uh, and I witnessed her going through pain, and then comfort, and pain, and then comfort, and um, and about that was started at 7 p.m. and at 2 a.m. she curled up and got very comfortable and died, and uh, it was very hard. But I was oh, so yeah. grateful, so grateful that spirit let me be with her when uh-huh. she did leave, because I didn't want her to be out there alone somewhere, just dying, without feeling yeah. that love, nurturing that we give each other, you know. And that's uh-huh. that's probably what the most painful thing about this pandemic has been. So. So many wonderful beings, wonderful people, wonderful grandmas and grandpas and children and mamas and dads and and cousins and friends who have died without having their friends and their family around them. Challenging, so challenging. And all Absolutely. these wonderful, wonderful nurses and doctors who've done everything in their power to try to create a some kind of nurturing zone for these people as they are leaving. We are, we this this brings out our compassion at a level 
that we haven't had in such a continuous fashion. It's new. Uh It's different. And this makes us look at the world differently. All of us are looking at the world differently, not just here in the USA, but the entire world is seeing things differently. And that is what... that is that's certainly that that's something I think that that everybody should understand too. It isn't just the United States; it's the world that is going through this. It's not mm-hmm. you know just us yeah and, and oh everybody and you, focused, you, realize, you know yeah. and we need to remember that we are not in this alone by any means, and uh it's 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 an important, such an important thing that, you know, when I was 12 and I was given that vision of people sleeping under the American flag, and I know I've, I've spoken of this vision that was given to me so long ago, um, where the spiritual being walked me up the stairs of, of a house somewhere in the middle of the country, like Iowa or Nebraska or somewhere, and it was just a farmhouse, and and it was early, early in the morning. The The light was just breaking and coming through the window on the left wall. And uh, the wind was blowing gently and the curtains were blowing. And then on the right wall was a bed with two ordinary people, nothing unusual about them, a man and a woman. And, and they were asleep and they were sleeping under the American flag. And the flag oh. in one little corner was unraveling. And... Every time the spiritual beings would show me that image, that vision, over my lifetime, I never knew when they'd show it to me, but suddenly there it would be, and more of the flag was gone. And the last time they showed it to me was in uh, the winter of 1994. That's a long time ago. And, And the room was literally filled with thread. There was thread everywhere. And I could see the woman's left hand and she had under it, right there by her pinky, one white star. That's all that was left of the flag. Wow. So Symbolically, have, what is that saying, you know? It's saying that everything that this nation was built on, its foundation, its 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 ideals, its whole concept is disappearing while people are not paying attention. They're just accepting, 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 and maybe they're complaining and maybe they're arguing, but they're not really taking action to wake up and change. And every time the spiritual beings would show it to me, it would just, like, freak me out. Because I'm I'm one person. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Tell me what to do. I'll go do it. And uh, uh-huh. the last time they they did tell me to do something, and it was a, it rocked the fabric of my universe because uh, it was quite a, an ordeal that they asked me to do. Um, they had me first turn on my TV, which was pretty hysterical because it wasn't like connected to anything except the wall, and uh, and I used it specifically for videos, uh, and uh, uh-huh. so. I turned it on, and crystal clear, a picture came on the TV screen. Uh, crystal clear. <laughs> and that wow. in itself, beyond anything anyone could believe. <laughs> and and there were two people talking. This man was interviewing this other man, and he was asking him questions, and this man was talking about uh, re- preserving and, and, and recovery of the environment and and uh, the ecology and the economy is what he was talking about, putting it back together. And uh, and Spirit says, you you need to go talk to that man. And, and as soon as they said it, the man gave his phone number. <laughs> so I wrote it down. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and then the picture disappeared and uh, went back to fuzz, which was what you would normally see if you turned that TV on. And uh, so I did call the man. I ended up uh, working with him uh, to... Um, create uh, papers that would help congressmen, senators, uh, and judges, all kinds of people all over the country, uh, in every state, um, understand what was going on with the economy and the ecology of this nation and how to start to uh, restore it. And so it was a long paper that I wrote with him, and, and we gave it out at conferences all over the country. 
and uh, so that was and then they introduced me to a whistleblower and and I helped uh, free this whistleblower from jail which was another story that is too long to ever get into but uh, outside of my comfort zone by a long shot <laughs> that is not me uh, I remember standing in this courtroom um, and the attorney the prosecuting attorney the attorney um standing there speaking and I knew he was lying and and I and I didn't know what to do and and Michael I said Michael the archangel do something and and he just used my body and I stood up in this courtroom and I said he's lying and then I went over and I took the papers out of his hands I remember doing this and it was like watching from outside of my body as Michael the archangel did this it was like oh my god Okay. And uh, and it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> and they ended up releasing this man from jail, and it was like unbelievable. I I I think about these things that you know you have the courage to say I am willing to be a vehicle for truth, for love, for compassion, and I call on an angel. Whatever needs uh-huh. to be done, go ahead. Use this body and do it. And uh, if you're willing, spirit will do it, and um, it'll blow your mind because it blows mine. And I've oh, yeah, done. Oh yeah, I would think so. And I've done things like that my whole life, but but it, it all of this is you know this is all a build up to where we are now. We are now. The people didn't wake up. They haven't woken up. Some of them are awake, but not enough. We still have a zone in time where. If we don't do something about the oceans, there are there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish in another five years. You know, if we don't do something about, and you can write your list, um, we're in a completely destructive place. And it's not just about the planet, it's about humanity itself. We have come to such a dark space where we have allowed power and greed to be the currency instead of love. And that's what this time is really about. And that's why there's a pandemic. It's here to make us stop and think about what is truly important and stop running into every form of marketing plan that sells you an escape, whether it's a bottle of beer or a video game or the football game or a pizza hut, whatever. These can be escapes that we use to step away, we don't want to look at it. We don't want to look at what's really going on. It's easier to just complain about it with friends and then talk about something else. So the world has to come to a stop so we can get that doorknob turned. We can't turn it and have all that we want and desire without saying no to the darkness and forgiving those who've participated, including ourselves. Because each one of us is part of the responsibility of what we have allowed. And that takes a lot of loving yourself to forgive. It's easier to run away than forgive. But I'll tell you, the rewards come with forgiveness. Well, it it also is easier to see where other people are at fault instead of looking to yourself as well. And and there, there, there again is the practice of recognizing we are each other. We are all relations so if you see something you don't like you have to consider what is it in yourself that makes you activate and what are you not doing if you don't like something 
to change that. So it's a really, really important time for us to stand up, you know, to witness the people who are walking uh, and protesting in the streets for justice for everyone. You know, I'm old enough to have been a part of the uh, protest that took place for the Vietnam War. And um, I witnessed the same things we're seeing now, except the people are more now than there were even then. You know, I uh, was a stringer for the newspapers back at that time. And for those of you who don't know what a stringer is, that's a photographer who doesn't have a regular salary. They just (laughs) get out there, get the pictures, and sell them to the newspapers. And uh, and I used to, um, and I covered, you know, here in the state of Oregon, I was up there at the Rose Bowl in Portland, um, the Rose Garden, when they were, um, uh, the police were beating people up with billy clubs, and they weren't doing anything. They were just peacefully protesting. And, and I had a policeman come right up to me and said, you either put that camera down or I'll shove it down your throat. I'll never forget his words. And I and and you know he was right out of Cool Hand Luke. For those of you who've seen Cool Hand Luke, he had big mirror sunglasses, a big Harley behind him, and and uh, he was a big guy. And uh, of course, I put my camera down and took off because, uh, well, for a lot of reasons, I only had one camera. I couldn't afford to have it broken. <laughs> no. and, and of course, I'm an Italian, so we're survivors. And at any rate. Um, and then I was in New York, and I photographed uh, uh, the people in Central Park, in the meadow in Central Park. They were all just singing and peacefully protesting. And and the police came in on horseback and ran them down. Oh. Now when was it? it? And that was in, in uh, the early 70s, 71, 70, 1970, somewhere in there. It's just horrible. Horrible to witness. But, so this is not new, what we're seeing now, but the protests are all over, everywhere. Thousands of people. And you know why? Because we've had this pandemic, and the people are thinking, and they're living, and they're responding. And what happened to that dear, gentle man? Oh, my God. That you know, I I I can't watch it. I mean, no. I, I I've watched it, you know, but but they, they have it on so much. It's just it's painful to watch. Oh, I think of his and, family, I friends, his children. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh my God! It's it's just so. How hardened have we become because of all of these video games and all of the horrific movies people have watched that you could watch someone die yeah, no, and that, not that. bond. I, the humanity, uh, there is no humanity in a policeman who could do that. And he wasn't even alone, four of them. Where is I don't understand it. Yeah, no, I uh, that I don't understand how any one of them could have pushed, you know, him off and said, oh, you know, enough. They were help. Instead, they were helping him because yeah. it's saying not only do they not understand all my relations, they don't even understand all my humanity. Yeah. So yeah, so they- on an ind- on. On an individual basis, because, you know, everybody's kind of wondering, you know, what can I do, what, you know. I mean, you know, certainly coming to, go ahead. What what the planets really are asking you for is to really take a look. The planets are asking you to start transforming the way that you respond to the world. They're asking you to reevaluate what you value and then have the empowerment, empower yourself through your values to stand up, to take action, whether it's walking in a protest or making sure you vote 
or you know running some GoFundMe to save a tree, you know whatever it is that you feel is your passion, rediscover uh-huh. it because we're all here for a little piece of the pie. We're not going to none of us, no one of us is going to change the whole pie. But each of us has a little piece, and it's our heart center that tells us what piece that is. For some people, it's saving the feral cats. For other people, it's saving a a tree. For other people, it has more to do with children or old people or or people finding what they they treasure. There's so Mm -hmm. many little pieces to the puzzle. What piece is yours? Your heart tells you instantly. It's what you love. That's your peace. You didn't come here to go do something that's not aligned with you. Yeah, you might do that for money. But even if you have the right attitude and you have to mop floors, I guarantee that you will find fulfillment and you'll be a vehicle for the light while you're doing that. And there'll be joy because you're being a vehicle. You know, I know that no matter what spirit gives me to do, I am a vehicle for the light. And it may be that there's no way for someone who I need to touch, who I need to help, except if I did this odd thing. Uh You know, and so I am always willing and I'm always an optimist, too. (laughs) It's Part of my nature. <laughs> so I'm, but we all have that if we follow our hearts. Our optimism comes from staying in your heart center. Absolutely. The, you know, the heart is always, always joyful. It only breaks when we are attached to something. Only when you have expectations and attachment will your heart break. And I'm not saying. You won't have those. Yeah, that's a really good point because, I mean, hearts don't necessarily break, but they can be bruised for sure. But, you know, your your heart is is a very strong part of you, and it it doesn't break; it just bruises, and and it will heal if you if you work on it, and it will you know, bring you to better times and better places and and better people, hopefully, if it was a person that, that bruised you. But, um, yeah. you know, it is, these are times when there's so much going on and we're sitting back and our, our jaws are just dropping open because we can't believe we're seeing what we're seeing, but we are. And everybody, I would think, wants to in some way help make a difference, change things. And, and you know, it's, it's totally possible. You, you know, it doesn't mean you have to get out and, you know, ride a white charger through a crowd, but but you, you can do it a piece at a time, a person at a time, um, a gift at a time. So you don't have to, you know, you, you know I, I think many people think, you know, well, I'm not an activist and stuff like that. You don't have to be. What you have to, you have to, do is be cognizant of what you're doing and how you're doing it for other people and you know one gift at a time one day at a time it does work but but it's it's not just sitting back and and you know seeing what good stuff you can accumulate it's it's more or less of a you know these are these are times of massive change um everything is shifting and uh you know i i did the um, prediction for June today and got it up and and basically it, it it said you know if something crumbles that's 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 not a sad thing it gives you a foundation to build something better from mm-hmm. so that so that it it's you know you know you you see people that have lost their businesses or their stores or 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 whatever and and you know while it's sad and it's devastating and it's you know, you know I can't imagine losing something like they've lost. I just, I've not been there. I can't imagine it. But 
once they get over the grieving process, it's it's you know, pick yourself up and start all over again. What is it? Dust yourself off, pick yourself up and start all over again. And if you do that with the right attitude, you can't help but be successful, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I remember years ago a woman coming into my store when I used to have my bookstore down in Vegas, and uh, and she came in, and there had been, uh, like the day before, there had been a terrible fire, and it had burnt down a whole uh, apartment building. And she came in and she told me, oh, yeah, um, my apartment was in that building. And she was probably in her 60s, and she said to me, she says, I said, well, did anything, did you, I mean, was anything saved? And she said, no, I I lost everything. And I said, how are you handling that? And she says, it's a new beginning. I just thought, wow, now that woman is advanced. I don't think I have that much advancement in me, but God (laughs) bless her. You know, she chose to see it as a new beginning. And that's the key. What are you choosing? What are you choosing? What are you looking at? How do you look at life? If you're always focusing on what's not there, you will never see what's there. Uh Uh-huh. Exactly. You know, so focus on what's there. Even if what's there is just one little cookie, that's all that's left in the cupboard. Well, it's one cookie. I'm going to take my time and enjoy that cookie. Yeah. Well, you know, you know there's, there was a there was a movie out a long time ago called The Never Ending Story. Oh yeah. And in it, the world, the universe, whatever, was destroyed. And at the very end, there was this this girl who was sort of like a prophet, and this um, little boy who, you know, rode the dragon, and and. She opened her hand, and there was a little tiny sparkling piece of stardust there. And he said, she said, this is all that's left. And he, they looked at it, and he said, but it's so, so small. And she said, that's all you need to create a miracle. And then suddenly you, you see the miracle being created. So, but it's true. You know, it, it, so long as you've got a grain of hope, a grain of faith, you, you can create miracles. You know, it's, it's a matter of your faith, and it's a matter of you um, certainly following through that it's not just for you, but it's for humanity as well. And I think that's important for people to remember that the changes that are going on now are not so much on a personal level as they are on a global level for all of humanity. And that's where the major changes are going to be. And I think uh, people remember, too, is your your attitude not only uh, fosters your life and creates in your life what you want, but your attitude is what will help raise the consciousness of the entire world. You Uh are one light connected to many lights, and the more we light those lights brighter by clearing ourselves of the things we're attached to and focusing on the things that we wish to manifest and focusing clearly, those lights get brighter and brighter and brighter. And they will eventually cause people not only to see the darkness, but to heal it. You know, right now we're looking and oh, we need yeah. to we need to go ahead and find our little piece of it. And for some people, that piece may be as simple as just working on yourself. Uh-huh. Loving yourself is a huge light, and that is super. So, I mean, you don't have to go out and march in the protests. Yeah. You have to choose what works for you. And everybody choosing something positive <laughs> creates an amazing world. It will be an amazing outcome. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I I know that um, being conf- and I think the two together, having come together like they did, you know, just coming out of nine weeks of isolation, and then having go on what is going on now, um, it it it's 
you know, it, it just seems to have snowballed into something that is very hard to um, to manage. Um, yeah. It, it's sort of like, oh, my God, you know, here I thought, I, I, you know, we were going to get back to normal. And I think the, the reality here is there is no normal anymore. And you know what? I think that's the most wonderful set of words I've ever heard because when I hear someone say back to normal, there's a part of me that says, no, I don't want to go there. Back to normal, what oh. they call normal, is not normal. Back to normal is people slaving away and rich people getting richer and people at the top controlling the people at the bottom. And when you understand that circle and how it's been so, oh, distorted in this country and I and probably in other places. And, I, you know, I was, uh-huh. I, you know, I'm the president of our Veterans for Peace group here. And uh, we had a meeting last week and we were discussing different things. And I And I said to everybody, I says, well, you know, you, you, we talk about um, uh, making change, but you have to see the big picture first to understand why the changes don't go through. And you come way back here and and look at the prison system. It used to be prisons were designed so that people who really were a danger to society could be put somewhere to change and then be released when they worked that out. But Uh that's not what happened in this country. We decided we would allow privatization of a prison. And to privatize the prison means we now have a business who has a bottom line and wants to keep that prison full and wants to make more money. And that is not anything about protecting the society. But it activates and emphasizes the power of money. So what happens is we have to have poor people because the poor people are people who become desperate, and as a result of desperation, we, they look to find a way to make a living. They don't have the good education. They don't have a means to the good education. They don't necessarily have a mom and dad home to make sure that they're learning things because their mom and dad are doing everything in their power to make a living so that they at least keep a roof and food. And so what are those young people going to be doing? Some of them get desperate and they find ways to make money by stealing or by drugs or by their human bodies. And what does that do? It feeds the prison system, so they want that done. What else does it do? People who don't have the money don't have the health care they become ill. They have to live off of. I remember a poor woman on TV being interviewed, and she says, "No, I have to. Eat, I eat at McDonald's because I can get dinner for all my family for four dollars." But that's not good food. That's not nutrition. So they end up becoming, and it's hard to make that link because it's a long link. They become sick, uh-huh. and so that feeds feeds another entire group of corporate structure the pharmaceutical structure, the AMA medical uh, apparatus structure. And and it goes on and on from there. And so you see the currency of money and how it resolves and how they don't want to give everybody a level playing field. They don't want to improve the lives of people who are poor because if they did that, they couldn't keep this circle going. This is why we have to make an enormous change. That's normal. That's been normal for a very long time. We need to go to a new world. Forget normal. Let's go to a new world where everyone is loved, cared for, nurtured, recognized as the treasure, the treasures that they are. Every human life has the ability to give great gifts to all other life. We need to see them as that, every one of them, no matter where they're born, no matter where they live, no matter what language they speak or what their belief system may be. These things are just part of their path. Let us love them and give them the opportunity that is what made this nation so great with so many different 
viewpoints and minds creating new and ingenious things. But that's a new world. It's a new world. We can't go back to normal because normal is not healthy. It's simply the money currency. And what we're trying to do by creating this new world, to go through this new doorway, which is the beginning of the next yuga, the beginning of the new golden age, we have to walk through it together in integrity, in transparency, and in love. That's where we're going. (laughs) We've got to kick the shackles off and move on. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's going to be a, a, not not impossible, but it's going to be a difficult process. Well, that's, that's why so many people have died. It's not just a disease. It's a step towards where we need to go. If we don't break these Uh, locks on us. The locks on us are the illusions that we have allowed to be created around us that we believe are the way this world is. We accepted it. We accept that those who have the money have the control. No. No, they don't. Do you know when the French Revolution took place? There were, Uh what, 144,000 or so noble people. There were over 7 million poor people. Now you tell me who can't have the power, and I will tell you that all they need to do is know they do have the power. That's where we're going. the The hope is that they have the power and the integrity to do it in a loving manner. Yes, the last time, the, the French Revolution, yes. I only show you part of the example. The rest of it is really questionable. <laughs> I agree. Yes, yes. I, no, I mean, we should not be I mean, hitting on the stage while we're guillotining the people. Their, their no, solution no I, the I am not, uh, I'm not promulgating um, that. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand. You know, I don't want you to set one of those up in Washington Square or yes. something and just say, step right up, you know. Not going to happen. No, 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 no. I want people to realize that break this vision that we are less than. Break Uh that vision. Because we're not. And together we are more powerful. If together we say we want to get rid of fossil fuels, we can do that. Uh We can do that. We want renewable energy. We can do that. We want the plastic out of the ocean. We can do that. We have to recognize. We can. And, you know, we are ingenious. That old saying, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. There is no question that that is a true statement. And it's time. Let's get those inventions going, baby, because we've got a lot of things we need to solve. Well, do do the the stars astrologically, because I know there are a whole bunch of... um, of yes. um, oh gosh, full moons and um, eclipses, eclipses and all sorts of stuff like that. But you know, just understanding the key points of where the stars are right now, where these planets are right now. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. the fact that we have had Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter together in Capricorn, that hasn't happened for nearly eight hundred years. That's a long time. <laughs> and what happened back then was uh, the initiation of uh, the the cementing of money as the currency on the planet. That is what took place at that time. What happened is at that time, Venice in Venice, which was a very powerful uh, uh, nation uh, at that time, they were a powerful group, um, they started printing the ducat. Uh, the ducat is a form of money. And they were the first ones to print a form of money that would take over all of Europe. A ducat became the standard in European money. And by doing that, what ended up happening over about a 10-year to 15-year period, 
was that the kings and queens of these countries realized that having money printed uh, or or forged or whatever it is, I mean, it's poured basically because it was gold, the Dukat, the little uh-huh. coin, uh, that they would have more control. They had more control over the people. So that's when they began to actually create their own monies. And that has controlled humanity for almost 800 years. Well, what are we doing now? What are the planets saying now? All coming back in Capricorn. They're saying it's time to transform the old structures. It's time to break them down, expand them, take a spiritual viewpoint to them, and see them in a more worldly fashion. When we do this, we have to upend everything. We can't expect to, I think Cryon said it really well for anybody who listens to Cryon. If you don't, you can go online and put in K-R-O-Y-O-N, free, R-F-R-E-E, audios, A-U-D-I-O-S. And you can get Cryon's page and you can look and see whatever he's saying or has been saying because he's been saying things since 1989. At any rate, as he as he recently put it, um, if if you went into a factory that wasn't working really well and you were the troubleshooter you, and you said, oh, well, you know what we have to do. We have to shut the factory down, rebuild over here, and rebuild over here, and then you'll get twice twice the outcome. And the person would look at you and say, I can't shut my factory down. Are you crazy? And so they paid you, but you left, and they never did anything. Well, what's happened now is the pandemic has shut everything down. So now we can retool it, and that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's Pluto in Capricorn with Jupiter and with Saturn saying we can. The ancients used to say when Jupiter and Saturn come together and can join, okay, so they're they're close to each other, they're in the same sign and in the same degree, we have what we call the sign of the guru. The great savior arrives. Ah. Jupiter and Saturn have been traveling together with Pluto since the beginning of this year. Saturn now has pulled ahead, but it is retrograde. It will come back. And as we come to the end of this year in December, Jupiter and Saturn come together, not in Capricorn. Capricorn is all the old things and the old structures, and Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn, which rules all forms of time, the old the structures, the governments, the banking systems, all of that is part of Capricorn. But instead, they're coming together in December in Aquarius. Oh, I know that. Sorry, you you hit a sign I know something about. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Aquarius is the sign of revolution, freedom, invention, genius. The United States of America was born with our moon in Aquarius. And we have been Uh a leader of inventions for the entire world. So the sign of the guru comes this coming year in Aquarius. It is also the sign of humanity. It's the sign of healing. The ancients used to call this the female healer, the female doctor. And I think that's very interesting. And, of course, in Aquarius, Saturn still rules. Saturn is the ancient ruler of Aquarius. So we have that power. And this is the sign of cooperation and brotherhood. And isn't that the age we're entering? Uh huh. That's so fascinating. It's, it's powerful. So we have to go through a lot of dirt to get there, but we're going, and we will. And the fact that people are protesting in the streets right now, no matter what is shot at them, no matter walking through tear gas, 
they are telling us, we're awake, are you? Ah. You know, I, I think that that's the thing that, that has, has gotten gotten to me um, so amazingly. When, when it hit, when the pandemic hit, it, it hit, um, it hit everybody. It hit, it hit, you know, it hit the world. It didn't hit just us. And then mm-hmm. when the the crowds and the rioting hit, it didn't hit just us. It hit all the world. And that signaled to me that this was not something that was that was isolated to one particular country, continent, or area. It was a whole global shift that was coming. And and it, it wasn't, you know, for just the United States. It was for everyone. And yeah. that that kind of sent me onto the okay, so if the shift is you know, it can't be political because it it, it encompasses the whole world. So it has know, to have something to do with consciousness. Yeah. It it, it is it's about consciousness and, and the political aspect uh, whether this country or any other country, the political aspect has to do with uh, catalysts, the ones that are shocking the electric system or grid of the planet. Uh, and there are several of them, including the one that leads this nation. But uh, those individuals are catalysts for this change. So even if uh-huh. you don't like what they're doing, you need to love them for what they're doing because those souls the soul that's beyond what you see in that physicality has courage to stand up and be something that they know is not going to be worthy of their humanity, but it is worthy of the consciousness within them that they are Uh working to expand in this world. So it's a challenge for us to stay balanced when you understand what the wider or the real picture is about while you're looking at the dark hole (laughs) that we seem to have (laughs) blown out in the universe. (laughs) Well, you know, I I have to admit that, you know, everyone, every, every, everyone in the world, every country in the world has literally been given a time out for the last nine weeks. Yes. And now as we are breaking out of that time out, there's, there's all of this confusion and, and rioting, and, and, and it's, all, it's, it's all based in fear. Um, I'm sure there are other things that are going on here, but, but people's lives have been destroyed, absolutely, and there is fear. And, and the thing is, if you feed into the fear, you feed into the problem, you make it worse. If you step back and you trust that that all of this shift and all of this change ultimately is going to provide a better life for all of us, and trust that it's going to, and, and certainly not not just step step back and watch, but become involved in it to whatever degree you can, whether it's volunteering, whether it's sharing your 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 thoughts and your wisdoms with other people, whether it's whether it's you know. Um, I don't know mowing, mowing people's lawns that can't mow their lawns. I mean, it it it, it just it it can be so simple that anyone can do it. Um, that that you know, if if you do those random acts of kindness, if you start putting kindness and love out there, it grows like everything else does. But I think I think love grows faster than fear, and the more love there is, the harder fear runs from it. You know, I, I, the the protests that I see, I don't see them as fear. It's interesting. I see them differently. I see those people in those protests standing up for what they believe, and so oh, wait, I see the it protests, as protests. Yes. No, I, I agree with you on the protests. I'm talking about the rioters. Oh. Well, I think they're just opportunists. <laughs> I think the people who are rioting are, are, I don't know if they're doing it out of fear as much as they are opportunists looking to to rob stores and take advantage of situations that exist. And that's a horrible, horrible thing because 
it's exactly the opposite of what the protest purpose of the protest is about. The purpose of these protests is to recognize that humanity is all of us. It's not oh, just yeah. the white people or just the rich people. It's all the people. And I think that's Absolutely. what the protests are about. Whereas... Uh, what's been happening is the police have been trained not to recognize everyone as human beings that they're supposed to be protecting. Instead, they see everyone out there as a possible thief. And so, therefore, we should just, especially if they're black or poor or some other immigrant uh, or nationality that they don't agree with, uh, those are just the enemy. Just get them, and if you have to kill them, it's okay. That's right. inhumanity. What, what, what confuses me about the rioters is when they break into like clothing stores, they just shovel racks and racks of clothing into into their baskets and run away with them. And all I could think of was, how do you know those will fit you? I mean, <laughs> you know, it, just and it's stuff that they can make money off of. They're opportunists. Oh it's yeah, I guess so. It, but, you know, it's okay. It's okay because eventually they will come to some point of recognition and awareness and they will grow. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And there will somewhere, maybe not this lifetime, but somewhere there will be a balance to all of this. Yeah, and, um, yeah. you know, you, you, I trust that. I truly believe it. But... Um, it seems so senseless, and yet maybe it's necessary so we can build a better format or a better platform to work from, to share, to, to govern from. I don't know. I, I, think, I think it is there to uh, force people to see what inhumanity is. We have this inhumanity of the police, but there is a faction that follows the levels of inhumanity that have been promoted through marketing. When you turn on the TV and you watch advertising, they are selling you, whether it's a a blender or a drug, they are selling you something that's supposed to make you feel better, make you feel like life is better because you bought this item. And by doing that, that releases you from the issues of humanity itself. It doesn't pull you into humanity. It pulls you into materialism. Humanity is when we see each other and care about each other and work with each other and do our best to improve the lives of everyone we know. Not pay the bottom line for some company. So these people who are looters are showing or reflecting to us in humanity, which is the exact opposite of why the people are protesting. So we need that to, again, be reinforced with who are we and what are we choosing. Uh I saw an amazing clip the other night, Um, a young woman There was a man with a a hood over his head. You couldn't see his face or anything. He was all in black, and he was trying to break into this store, and this young woman kept putting herself in front of the store, and he kept literally picking her up and throwing her aside. And she'd get back up, and she'd stand again in front of the store. And I, I saw that and thought, my God, talk about heroism. The courage it takes to stand up and say, no, that's wrong. You you don't really want to do this. This is not good for you or for the people who own this store or for any of us. It's a beautiful thing to see someone having such incredible courage in the face of so much danger. It is. It's it's like that that gentleman that stood in front of the... um, tank in tenement, tenement Square. Right, right, exactly. Wow, are we in such a moment. But we must really keep our minds clear and, and not fall into anger or hate. 
um, and realize that, you know, the planets are always there to teach us things. And that's what they're doing right now. And it's it's hard because literally uh, Pluto is digging everything up that uh, really is broken, is really not representing our best interests, is really does not have the integrity or the stewardship that humanity should be uh, working with. So we have to look at all of this, and then we have to come within ourselves and say, well, what can I do to make change? For some of us, it's simply uh, taking the time to figure out who's the best person to vote for, or what's the best policy to vote for. For others, it's out and say, you know what, I am going to plant a tree every day for the rest of my life. You know, whatever the little thing is or whatever the big thing is that's in your heart, do it. Don't well, wait I think till tomorrow. Also, also, something that, you know, I give myself homework every now and then. Um, I should probably do it more often. But you know, when I get into a situation that just to me feels so awful and so sad and it's, it's depressing, I, I, I actually say to myself, okay, how can I make this possible? Because if I have pulled this into my life, it means I am capable of making a possible out of it. And sometimes it takes longer than normal, <laughs> but but I always, always, always to this point in time have you know, at at some time sat back and said, "Okay, this is giving me a chance to do uh like the like the time out we had for nine weeks, time to do writing, time to do organizing, time to get all sorts of things together actually it, it it's a it's an incredible thing, but I didn't spend as much money when I didn't get to go out, so my money's in a better situation now than it was before the pandemic, and so I, I I I keep a running list of okay, this is a a real crappy situation, and and I miss people and I miss all sorts of things. But what are the positives that have come out of this? And you know, when I look at my list, it's very very long now, and it 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 gives me hope that you know I'm I'm looking at the positive at, at what what did I learn from it what 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 grew from it. And what what is the outcome of this situation that I thought was horrible at first, but then now I'm kind of grateful that I had the time. Uh So, you know, if we look at, I don't know how you look at looting and make a positive out of it, but I bet you can if you try hard enough. You know, if you're looking at the overall concept of, okay, what's going to happen now, you know, and and where does society go from now? Yeah, I think when we look at things like looting, uh, we have to we have to say to ourselves where and how and what do we need to do so that people will not have the desire to do something like that. What is it that we are missing? Where is the fracture in our society in the way that we teach others or the way we do not give opportunity to others? that would make people angry or opportunistic and choose to hurt other people. To me, any time someone is robbing someone, whether they're robbing them of money and, and, and merchandise or they're robbing them of their own pride, of their own um, self-esteem, that person who is doing the robbing is doing it because they're missing a piece. They're trying to rob that piece from someone else. So what is it that we haven't done that we need to change in our outlooks, in our policies, in the way that we uh, teach our society that will give them that peace? That's true, and you know we really did create these people that are doing this. I mean, it's not like you know you can't. We say, did. Well, I yeah, I didn't do that. Well, yeah, yeah, we did. If we created an atmosphere where that kind of anger and and greed and 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 
whatever um, has been able to grow, then then it's up to us to 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 create a better atmosphere for people so that they don't feel the need to do this, so that they aren't angry at the world. And yeah. I don't know if it's education. I don't know if it's I don't know. Well, I, you know. I, I think I think it. You know, it starts. It starts very basically. You know, we need to have a level playing field for all humanity. People uh-huh. would not see other people as marks, someone that I should rob, if they looked at them as people just like them trying to make their way in the world. It would be different. So, you know, when you look at it from the top to the bottom, the bottom, uh, we need to create a more level playing field. At the top, we need to change the way that corporations handle their money. If all they do is look at a bottom line, and if you can cut out all of these people in order to get a bottom line, cut them out. And, and use that line, which has been so prevalent since the 80s. Oh, it's nothing personal. It's just business. No, mm-hmm. no. Everything you do is personal. We are humans. We should rise to a level of realizing what humanity means. We've forgotten it. We decided that business is more important than humanity. That's what that saying is. You oh, know, yeah. it's time to change but, that at the top. And I believe, you know, we have already started seeing major changes. There are corporations now that are community-styled, for-profit corporations. And that's the direction we need to go. When you reach a certain figure, uh, people should be returning money to the community. When you reach a certain figure, people should, uh, corporations should be returning money to the people who work for them, not firing them. Ay, ay, yeah. ay. It's coming well, back. Thing to- is, well, yeah, but but are, are you talking – See, the other thing that I see as being a huge problem is the drug situation. That, you know, again, with all of these illegal drugs coming in, people are are losing their grasp of reality. And how do they then, um, you know, how do how do you how do you change that? Well, nothing happens instantaneously. But when you start giving people uh, a reality that is good that is helpful, that's supportive, why would they run from it? People run from reality for a lot of reasons, but almost invariably, it's like you run from pain. That's what we do. If you push somebody with a painful item, they're going to run away from you. And where do you run to if you have nowhere to go? Drugs is the easy doorway. Alcohol is an easy doorway. And alcohol is So, So we have to get down to the root of the situation. What is causing them to feel in pain that they need to run? And I guarantee it's a combination of worthiness and passion. When we don't feel worthy, we don't follow our passion. When we have passion and other people douse it out, we stop feeling worthy. Uh So we have to find a doorway. And again, that comes back to childhood because if you don't have a level playing field where every child has an opportunity to grow, to learn, to be valuable, to realize they're valuable. Not that somebody is better than you, but that we're all together better. Uh That's where you have to go. And it takes time to get there because you have to start where you are and some people are already pretty far lost. We have to find <laughs> ways to bring those people back. Oh, uh, Lord, it's a big job, and uh, it's going to take a lot of it, people it, to it, figure it, it. 
Yeah, it's a huge job, and I think the the thing that that I'm trying to figure out more than anything else is where do you start? I mean, how do you how do you help someone feel worthy? And 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 you know, you, know, you is do that it, the bo- it, You know, is that the you, is that the bottom, or is there another lower level that you have to start at? in order to build up cuz you're going to have to start at the bottom you can't stop start at the top it won't work that way no but you know what when you start to help people feel worthy and that can be a lot of things it's it's like going to a very very poor neighborhood where kids they don't have opportunities to create self esteem for themselves cuz no one's giving them the direction uh-huh. i tell you what if i went into a neighborhood and I said, you know what, we have this mag- this wall on this factory that's just plain ugly. I've got an idea for an, a picture we could put here. Would you like to help me? Uh-huh. I guarantee children would say, what do we do? And I'd say, well, what are your ideas? Here's mine. Let's create something together. And by doing that, you have eliminated your ego and you've opened the doorway for them to blossom. You've opened the doorway for them to be part of something that builds their self-esteem and makes them feel successful and proud of something. That's the kind of thing that needs to be done everywhere. There are lots of wonderful people who can do it. But Uh we need to... it. It's again. It, it, These things come back to this stupid money currency till we flatten that so that everybody has what they need then everything will move a whole lot easier. And that's going to come. This is a, the, this combination of planets is a breaking down of the banking systems as we know them. There's now, the how long... I, I know this is the doorway, but how long is the door open? <laughs> I think it's going to be about a 20-year zone for us to get to where we need to go. But we're, the thing is, with any transit, the action always hits like a two-by-four, a shattering experience at the front end. And that's where we are. Uh We're in the shattering experience. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it's just like planting. You've got to break the ground before you can put the seeds in it. Well, that's what we're doing. We're breaking ground. (laughs) You're not kidding. Um, (laughs) We are, and... You know, I I found I find it um, I find it fascinating that you know they, they these two hit together. Um, I'm sure it was not a coincidence. I'm sure that no, it was cosmically planned, if nothing else. But but it's it's sort of like um, I would like to I would like to feel that that even though. There may be um, like one world orders and things like that trying to make something happen. I truly believe that cosmically speaking, there is a greater manipulation going on, and that for the good of humanity, things are going to get better, not worse. Well, when you step back, okay, yes, manipulation is going on. Yes, the the normal. The old normal wants to uh, Uh reinstate itself, and they'd like to reinstate themselves in such a fashion that no one will be free to make that change. However, while the new normal uh, or old normal is working very hard to uh, take back control, consciousness is expanding, and it's expanding rapidly. Uh Absolutely. A hundred... And one monkey experience is on the board. It will <laughs> act. And when it does, the majority, not the minority, will realize they have power. When the majority realizes that, they will take the power. And then everything will change. And they won't get their way. Because once we have a magnifying glass on the things they're hiding... They can't hide it. Consciousness is a magnifying glass. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I think that, that from what I can see, um, <clears throat> you know, people keep saying, well, you know, by the first of the year, everything will be okay again. And that's, I don't see that. Um, no. You know, I, I this just, is back, you know, to the sleeping people. Until enough people are awake that we can flip everything, we will keep having experiences. The spiritual beings told me back in January, and that was before I knew anything about this pandemic, they said uh-huh. that what's coming will go for two years. There will be ups and downs, but it will be a two-year process. So you got from 2020 to 2022. It's not going to go away, and whatever comes will be a catalyst to push it further if the people aren't awake. So what's happening right now is a form of catalyst. What else is coming? We've got wildfires. We've got uh, hurricanes. Uh, We've got an election that's going to be an interesting process uh, and maybe a bloody one. And and then we've got earthquakes next year. So we've got all kinds of things coming. <laughs> you know, that's, or do they that's have to come in, in a really miserable way? No, I'm not saying that they have to. I'm saying if the people wake up, they will balance it out really fast. If they don't wake oh, yeah. up, or a long ride. And that ride will keep going. Um, so, you know, the doorknob is supposed to be turned in 2022. Well, what what gets, you know, you hit on something that, that I've been seeing and feeling for a long time here, and that's that the earthquakes and volcanoes and storms are increasing. And not only that, the thing that I saw recently was that um, the the rhythm of the planting and harvesting is going to be skewed tremendously so that there there may well be some food shortages because farmers are not going to be able to plan when it's safe to plant and when it's safe to harvest. And um, oh, They've been working me- on changing that whole picture in Europe. America has not really followed yet. But they've worked on uh, taking in cities uh, these skyscraper buildings. They've been taking the whole top three floors and turning them into... Uh, oh, aquifer, uh, what is it called? Uh, we're hydroponics. Hydro, hydrofers. Yeah, Hy- they've hydroponics. been turning them yeah. into hydroponic farms. And uh, so they've got vertical farming going, and it's it's in a lot of places in Europe now. Uh, they've been working on that for the last 12 or 15 years. And America hasn't even picked up on it yet. Why? Because we have a lot of controls by agri-farms. Uh, the uh, big agribusiness has been controlling all kinds of things, and, and they're controlling the destruction of the bees. And, of course, Monsanto has a hand in all of this, as does Bayer and, and Merck and uh, these big, big, big companies, which are also uh, they're chemical companies, and some of them are even uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, where they're working to control the seeds of the world. Uh, you know what? Uh-huh break down it's going to come to a change but when the american people realize what it means to not have bees einstein said it a long time ago uh, humanity won't last more than three years when the bees are gone and wow. most americans you know where is the stories about the bees they've been what what monsanto farmers and agribusiness has been doing is they've been trucking bees around the united states Trucking them, trucking them, because they can't live outside in the areas where they have these agroforms because of the chemicals that they're pesticides and herbicides that they're spraying. It kills all of them. So instead, they they carry they have trucks with hives in them, and they drive the trucks with the hives over. It's insane. Wow. We're killing at a rate that's insane. And Americans, they're just you know they're so busy with their toys, they're not paying attention to the important stuff. This is the time out to find out what's really going on. We'll we'll get yeah. there. We're going to get there. We have to because I'll tell you, this is our opportunity for change, and we've all been asking for it, so let's go for it. Okay, we now will. I have another question. 800 years ago, basically, money was invented. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the Templars and everybody, oh, yeah. you know. But okay, been, so been, and eight so 800 years before that. 
there was another horrific no, it was, shift of some sort. And no, it wasn't 800 years before that. It was uh, in the 1200s. Uh, it was, uh, what year was it yet? 1200s is, I, I can't remember, it's five 525 or something. It was a a long time before that. It wasn't 800. These planets don't work like that. You can't get, it's not an exact number (laughs) when they come around where you get three of them together like that in a particular sign. Uh, So, and we don't have enough recorded history for that time for me to be able to tell you a whole lot. Uh, What I was able to find um, was about um, slavery one the one other time and that wasn't the whole thing because that was not all three planets the the last time we had pluto and saturn together in capricorn was the time when uh we had an edict uh from uh the king of england where he opened the doors for um slavery to come to the united states and they went from some very small number of slave ships that were allowed to something like three thousand slave ships. Uh, so there was a whole it was a whole different issue of humanity at that time and control of okay. human life. So all, all I'm saying is, humanity has has been famous for not catching things the first time around. Oh, of so course, yes. So if we miss it this time. We won't. Okay, but but if we did, would it come around again in another 500 to 1,000 years? It'll come again in 26,000 years. 26,000. Oh, that's right. Okay. That's that's what makes this time so incredibly unique is it's a combination of things. That's a long things. time. <laughs> I know. It's, it is truly a perfect storm where we are or a perfect illumination uh, or some people call it a perfect ascension the magnetics on the planet and the ley lines in the planet have been redistributed the change of the planet itself has really changed I don't know if the solar system itself has changed it may have I'm not aware of that but this point 26,000 years this is our solar system in its travel around Sirius, which is our center star, okay? Our Uh solar system has come to the closest proximity to Sirius of the entire time of its travel around that star. We are at the closest proximity. This is that moment, which lasts about 100 years, where we have opportunity to leap beyond anywhere we've been before. We have have the magnetics and the doorway to the seated relations. In other words, those beings that first seated humanity on this planet, we are closest to them now than we have ever been. And so all the issues of integrity and clarity and consciousness are more available to us now than have been for 26,000 years. And this is even written in the Bible. It's in the Bible. I have have a question. Um, You know that I I do a cosmic forecast for every month. It goes up on the website. And I put April's up there today. And among other things, and, and it's channeled, so I don't always understand exactly what I put up. You know, mm-hmm. I make sure the English is appropriate and stuff like that, and maybe even spelling. But but beyond that, um, I trust whatever goes up. And one of the mm-hmm. things that that was written was that um, that there would be rumblings beneath our feet, and we would be surprised at what was causing it. That um, there would be many more frequent earthquakes, and um, and storms like hurricanes and typhoons and things like that. And the ring of fire was going to reactivate and that it would almost seem like the Earth Mother was letting off steam, but in reality it was a course correction. Mm-hmm. Wow. I like it. Um, 
<laughs> course correction? Are it is a course correction. To... It's oh, okay. a very appropriate because that's really um, aligned. The magnetics on the planet have been realigned, and, and they continue to be realigned. So it is a course correction. It's a correction because of where we are in time as well as in mm-hmm. consciousness. So, yes, and I, ex- you know, I expect we're going to see more uh, rumblings, to say the least. So uh, not not right now, but uh, remember where Saturn is. Saturn has just gone into Aquarius, and Uranus is in Taurus. And for those of you who don't know what that means, Uranus is in an Earth sign. Taurus is an Earth sign, and Aquarius is an air sign. They do not go well together, but they are both fixed signs. So when you have them uh, working, they are in what we call a square. A square means we must step up to something. Something likely will be shattered, broken, shook up uh, in order to uh, avail us of a step. So this coming year, Saturn will go and make the direct square to Uranus. And when it does, there will be earthquakes, plain and simple. Uh, Uranus to Saturn is earthquakes. If Pluto or Mars gets involved, and I have not charted the course for these two yet, so I don't know, uh, Uh but Mars is highly likely to get involved during that time, then there will be fire. And uh, Saturn uh, tends to represent the Earth, uh, in Aquarius, it can have to do with air, the air. Um, Uranus in Taurus has to do with a shaking of the earth, all things physical. And uh, and if we bring Mars into the picture uh, and bring it into a fixed sign, such as uh, a Leo, uh, then uh, we can have a rumbling that may also include... Uh, a lot of fire, so there could be a volcano involved. So we have to see what's coming up next year, but I know there's no question in my mind Uranus and Saturn are going to square next year. Uh, Right now they are in a position that is too far apart for it to be active. Uh, Uranus is at 9 degrees, and Saturn has just entered zero. It is in retrograde. It will go back into Capricorn before it goes forward uh, formally and completely into Aquarius, so so that's coming. Well, the volcano, yeah, the volcano that that I keep zeroing in on. Two of them actually. One is Santorini, which of course was a super volcano, mm-hmm. and the only other super volcano I'm aware of is Yellowstone. Yeah, and we're all aware of that one. If you live in the United States, goes, yeah. that goes, that blows. I don't know how much life will be left on the planet because uh, uh, the United States will be covered with soot, uh, with ash, and there will be no sunlight for days, for I don't know how many months. Uh, when Santorini and, went, went, it was two years of no sun in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But, but, you know, we have things today uh, that we didn't have back then, and humanity yeah. is be very, very inventive, and who knows, maybe we will have tunnel doorways through the atmosphere that will bring sunlight. Who knows? I don't know. We also do have electricity uh, that we can uh, create uh, uh, light, daylight, light fixtures, so we can grow Uh things. And the hydroponics can be fantastic because they're indoors and it's very easy to create a space with light. So oh, yeah. uh, we'll have to see what we do. But uh, whatever happens, I would really recommend that we all think the positive. Yes, at first you can scream and yell and stamp your feet and get angry. But uh, do that for a very short time. you you got ten minutes, okay? And then <laughs> thinking, okay, how can this become something that will make us all better? How can this be used to go to the next step? What do I need to do to create the invention that it will take, whether it's an invention of my heart and my thoughts or an invention that I physically build? 
we we all create things through our intentions and if we intend to change the world we will do it we need to start as john lennon said imagine oh yeah well and and I, it isn't that we need to start on a grand scale we need to start on a small scale we need to start with ourselves and yeah. be an example to the children Exactly. And actually, and children it, are being better examples to us, I think, right now. <laughs> We've got a lot of <laughs> amazing children on this planet. Amazing. That image, I'll never get it out of my mind that I saw a long time ago. It was on YouTube where a little girl uh, ran in front of a whole uh, group of a battalion uh, of, uh, of uh, tanks, American tanks. Mm-hmm. And he ran in front of them and, and started yelling at them in her language. They were, you know how, how if you've ever stood next to a tank, a, a little three-year-old or four-year-old girl doesn't even come up to the top of the rubber. No, no, she doesn't. She stood in front of them, and they all stopped. And, and these men came out of the tanks to look at this little girl. It's amazing. That's, that's the courage of the new generation. They're amazing. They're amazing. So, you know, I, I'm happy to leave so I can come back and be one of those amazing ones <laughs> or at least join the ranks. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be yeah. quite that amazing. But nonetheless, I think I think well, we're going to have know. to shortly. Hmm? Yeah, no, well, I don't. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 it could be phenomenal. No, I and I do think it's going to be, and I know everything looks really dark at this moment in time, but I don't get the feeling of dark. And it's been interesting in in all of these weeks where we've been enclosed and everything. I've done readings for people, and it's been amazing because I only I always see such light and such positive energy, and I and I know everybody's quarantined like I am, and I know lots of people have you know are transitioning in jobs into another job for when they can have jobs again and stuff like that. But to me, it it feels like we have such a bright future if we just embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's recognizing what the future is, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, this whole time I've been staring at the ingress chart that's coming up uh, for the summer solstice. And uh, and for those who don't know what I do when I do mundane astrology, which is the astrology of the planet or the nation or the state, um, uh, we the ancients used to look at when the sun moved to zero degrees of a cardinal sign. The cardinal signs are the signs that rule the axis and they're the points of power in a chart and uh, and so they are marked by the equinoxes and the solstices so uh, when the sun goes to zero degrees of cancer we will be in the summer equinox uh, the summer solstice excuse me and uh, so that's coming up on uh, June the 20th uh, here on the uh, on the east coast there on the east coast it would be uh, like five Forty something p.m. At any rate, so that gives us a picture of what uh, the United States will be doing for that period of time till the Libra, uh, Libra sun, and uh, so the the fall equinox. So it's a, about a three month period. At any rate, when I look at this, you know, uh, Venus is in retrograde. Uh, and Venus rules the house of health. And in retrograde, it may be signaling that we will go back. We will go back. Will we go back to health, or will we go back uh, to the pandemic, to the disease? But interesting, uh, Venus is in um, a trine, a trine to Saturn, and Saturn rules the house of communication in this chart. And uh, Saturn is in the house of communication. Not only rules it, but it's in that house. It's where we communicate to each other and how we think. So going back uh, to thinking a different way is the statement, and it's retrieving the health of our thought processes. And Saturn in Aquarius is saying we need to look 
at a structure of freedom, a structure of cooperation, a government of brotherhood. It's, I, I think it's a beautiful statement in that that's in this chart. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, Uranus sits here in the sixth house, the house of health, and Uranus, of course, is always about change that is sudden and unexpected. But here it is, it's also the house of the workplace, and here it is making a wonderful trying to the midheaven, which is the house of careers. So there is this trying that says a doorway suddenly may open uh, for more visibility in terms of things of health and in terms of workplaces and in terms of careers. And sudden opportunity could come as a result of that. However, Venus is also square that midheaven, and it's pretty close square. So the statement is we are really still challenged, challenged uh, with relationships internationally because the midheaven represents the world and the public uh, in terms of how we're seen internationally. So there's a statement here that says uh, our relationships are challenged internationally. Our travel is challenged internationally. We are challenged in terms of workplaces with law, uh, with um I want to say, with international um, trade or import-export, we're challenged by uh, uh, court uh, judgments, some kinds of judgments that might be set or treaties. So there's um, some question about what's happening. And this international import-export challenge may have also to do with something that has to do with our health, the health of this nation, or the employment of the nation. So there's um, a lot happening there. But the majority, the place where we have a little congregation going on is in the 8th house, uh, we have Mercury there, we have the Sun there, we have the North Node, or what some people call the Dragon's, uh, the dragon's Tail, um, at 29 degrees of, of Gemini. And any time an astrologer sees the number 29 on a chart, we know that is a critical statement. Um, so it's very important. And in the eighth house, this is the house of uh, the money changers. This is the house where we share our goods, our money, our uh, our world with each other. And um, this is the house of mortgages and, and bankers. And um, it's also the house of the cabinet of the president of the United States. This is where the cabinet sits. And, of course, this would be also where uh, our banking system, printing of money, sits. So we have Mercury, the Sun, the North Node, and the Moon. But the North Node in Gemini in this house is 29 degrees, which, of course, puts the South Node in the second house at 29 degrees. And the South Node is about the past. The North Node is about the future, the direction we'll take. Uh, The South Node in the second house says uh, we have a critical issue from the past, what is it we value? Do we value spirituality because it's in Sagittarius or do we value money? Do we value the news as it stands or do we value the truth? Uh, there's a whole bunch of questions going on there. Uh, when we look at the North Node in the 8th house, this is a fascinating location because the North Node here says this is a critical time for us to move forward to look at the possibilities, it's in Gemini, look at all the possibilities of how we can share our money, how we can make our money together, how we can do money perhaps in a completely different way than we ever have before. That's huge. And North Node is in a trine to the part uh, the ascendant of the of the chart and also to the part of fortune of this chart. So it's saying this is an opportunity for us. And that north node also is active with Mars in the fourth house, which is the house of our uh, our homes, our physical property. And it's challenging Mars in that house. 
So there may be challenges with mortgages. How are we going to pay our mortgages? Um, How are the credit companies going to handle the payment of America's mortgages? So there are going to be some real interesting discussions going on. Uh, And are we going to go beyond where we've been? I, I tend to believe we will. Well, there's also what we call a yod, it's an odd word. It's They call it the finger of God, pointing to that north node. It's coming through uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and the Ascendant. The Ascendant is the people of this country. Uh, Saturn is in the house of communication and treaties, and Jupiter is in the house of what we value, our money, and issues of travel and freedom and learning and knowledge and the courts. So that Yod is saying, or the finger of God is saying, now is the time for us to come together, discuss, expand our knowledge, expand the way we handle uh, the banking system, Uh, learn from the past, and this is our time not just to to stress over these things, but to reconfigure them and let this energy flow into the future way we will uh, handle money. So this is a really big statement, and the moon is right there, conjunct that north node, Uh, The moon is right there, and the moon, again, represents the people of this nation. It represents the property of the nation. And uh, in this chart, it it represents, um, hmm, oh, it's just hidden. Its uh, ownership is hidden in this house. So it's part of the rulership of all the issues of mortgages, banking, taxes. Taxes are in here, too. And even debts, because... uh, All forms of inheritances are in this house. So it's going to be very... What happens then in the fall? Oh, the fall will have a whole new chart, and I haven't looked at it yet. (laughs) That's for another month. (laughs) Okay. We'll we'll look at that uh, in another month. But uh, the fact that our house of income has the south node in it that tells me, and the South Node is struggling uh, under the weight of the nation and the mortgages. Um, uh, but at the end of the second house is Pluto and Jupiter, who are in that uh, yod with the North Node. So it tells me that as we come to the end of this time frame, we will really be in a point of transition and transformation and expand our way of looking at everything. So it sounds like we have to struggle a little longer before we come to some kind of uh, revamping. Um, But, you know, I don't think anything is written in stone, even a chart. I believe humanity, its intentions and its consciousness have the ability to move this forward as fast as they choose to. So I am not going to say to anyone that it has to be a long struggle. Let us make it five minutes and get on. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Certainly, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, but yeah, humanity, you know, is is a large group, and large groups don't often um, move in Congress fast. So, you know, well, knowing... Seen, yeah, but we've seen some pretty amazing movement since this pandemic started. We've seen... Uh, That's true. That's true. Some amazing movement. So let's let's try to think positive. Uh, also, I will say this: Jupiter and Pluto are both in a beautiful sextil to Mars, and Mars is energy. Mars is movement, and it's in the fourth house. So someone's taking action here. They're trying to teach. They're trying to transform, and they're trying to take action regarding the property of the nation. This is all about the property of the nation, as well as the well, emotions have, of the. Yeah. I have to admit, I never would have thought that it was possible to shut down the United States, let alone the world, for nine Mm -hmm. weeks. 
and yet we did it. And mm-hmm. um, so it, it's it's kind of I mean, for those of us alive during this time frame, it's never ever happened before. And nope. and knowing that we have lived through something that should make the history books. I would hope it would make, or, but but you know, history books may have to be changed radically after this period of time, anyhow. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm watching. Um, yeah. I'm glad I'm a part of it. Uh, yeah. It 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 is. Um, there's a great deal of responsibility for those who are here at this point in time. First of all, understanding yeah. what's happening, and second of all, doing our best to put the energy in and out there so that it has some impact on, on not only our lives, but everybody else's. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, there is a beautiful statement in this chart when you look at Saturn making the trine to Venus, uh, because Venus in this chart not only uh, rules the seventh house, which is our uh, relationships, our treaties with other countries, and uh, it can be our relationship between government and people as well, or a relationship with our enemies. But uh, Venus also rules our wishes and dreams. What is it we want, and the world organizations that are that we are connected to. And to see this trying from Saturn. Saturn is a basically exalted ruler of the, this house of wishes and dreams in this chart. And, and Saturn is in rulership uh, in Aquarius, and it is in rulership in this third house, the house of communications, agreements, legal papers, and neighborhoods. And uh, and that trine says there's much opportunity for uh, for relationships to become secure, for uh, communication to become secure, uh, for the wishes and dreams of uh, the people of this nation and the large organizations that are, are uh, perhaps international, that stand in brotherhood, may uh, come to help us nationally, um, that they will achieve some of their wishes and dreams. So um, this is a beautiful statement, and uh, it's a statement of security in our communications. And isn't that something that we're all tremendously concerned about at this point in time. Are we all hearing the same news? Are we all hearing the truth? Or are we all hearing different things? And then we add our perceptions, and none of us really know what's going on. So this drawing tells me we have an opportunity to get on the same page together. I think that's beautiful. Well, absolutely. And, you know, if we don't grow... There's no point. So, yeah. uh, you know, in in many ways we had become stagnant, and it's yeah. You when know, you say that word normal, that's what I think. Stagnant. <laughs> then I'm an Aquarius. I probably always thought that. <laughs> <laughs> I just have Aquarius rising, so I kind of think I understand <laughs> what you're saying. Um, but it it you know it it's it's sort of like it is important to constantly grow, and and sometimes you. You know, when we're children, we outgrow our ch- our clothes and our shoes and everything, you know, rapidly. And as we get older, well, we still outgrow our c- clothes rapidly in other directions. But, but you know, the <laughs> element of growth, <laughs> I'm thinking of elastic <laughs> pants, you know. Um, but, but, you know, if you're not growing physically, you're at least growing emotionally and intellectually. So that there is that constant growth that, hopefully we are all a part of and and that helps to fuel the shifts and changes that are coming yeah well i think you know it it's a it, it's a it's a bumpy ride but i i i am the eternal optimist i know we'll get through it and i know we're going to get through it just right i know we're going to open the door and i know we're going to fill the world with a new light and uh Will we do it while I'm still alive? That part I'm not absolutely sure of, but oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. There, there is one really good thing about a bumpy ride, and that's that you stay awake. Hmm. You know, Maybe you aren't lulled we need a... into. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're not lulled into complacency. You know, yeah. a bumpy ride will keep you awake and on your toes. 
So it's it's really an important thing that that these bumps are happening because you want to be aware of all the shifts and changes and alterations that are being made in you know the world as we know it because yeah. it's changing. It's it, it's it's getting a facelift and there's no anesthetic. <laughs> so so it, it's <laughs> definitely it's yeah. not pleasant, but it's it's certainly survivable and and we will be better at the end of it and it's only going to take what 20 years you said before it's all said and done yeah pretty much we might i i like to think you will do it faster so uh, you know uh, i want to be positive i was hoping for i was hoping that the 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 major part would be over in two years and well then it's a matter of i the as we as all astrologers will tell you the, the first actually every Joel, Billy Joel told you the the first cut is the deepest <laughs> you know yes. um, so yeah it gets better it always gets better but sometimes it gets worse before it gets better during that first two years depending on how we respond to it in yeah. other words if the first time you get slapped you didn't pay attention you might get slapped a second time and it might burn even worse. Yeah, that happens when when lessons aren't recognized immediately. They come back a little tougher each time, and it, it goes from a slap to a two by four. I've had I've had a number of two by fours experience in my life, so I can attest to that. <laughs> I don't want any two by fours, please. You know, I have a hard time with the balsa wood. The last thing I need is a two by four. All those two by four moments really get your attention. Trust me. Um, <laughs> you never repeat those. Absolutely mm-hmm. never, 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 never. Um, we are just about out of time. You want to tell yes. people where they can get a hold of you and your website and stuff like that? Sure. Um, anyone who would like to connect, uh, my, uh, I'll give you my email address. It's astrologyandmore at gmail.com. And you just write those words out. Or you can go on Facebook and you can put in Michelle Avanti. That's Michelle with one L, A V A N T I, Avanti. And uh, you'll find me on Facebook. I live in Roseburg, Oregon. So I don't think there's any other Michelle with one L on there, but you never know. So, um, or you can call 541 900 1084. Um, every now and then I actually pick up that phone because someone calls. So yes, at any rate, <laughs> we we truly do wish you light and joy and that you will allow the laughter of the angels to pour through you even in times where there's pain so that you can find a lift. We don't have to stay in pain. We choose to stay in pain. So let's not choose that. Absolutely. And hopefully we will get you back next month sometime to kind of go over what's happening and and what to look forward to. Great. We'll do it. I I will be in contact with you. And thank you so much, Michelle. It's so good to talk to you again. Yes, it's been a delight. Big hugs to the world. Good night. Good night to you, too. Good night. And thank you, everybody, for hanging in there with us. Again, if you've enjoyed it, please, if you're on, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Let us know you're there so we can keep giving you this good stuff. Good night now. Oh, and um, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night for Mark Eddy's show and then another show on Friday with, uh, with Grant Collier and... Thursday with um, Mark Stavich. So we have a show every night this week. So please join us. Have fun. Stay well. Good night. <laughs>